Why is your bun so lopsided? Lappy. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're back with another Tashi's Tips Tuesdays. I feel like I need a jingle. <laughs> Are you really proud of me though? This is like, what, the fourth week I've done it? Which, if you know me, you've been here before, you know I'm not very organized. So the fact that I've kept this series up for just this short amount of time is a real achievement. So pat on the back for me. Um, so today I thought we would talk about like tips and tricks, not really tricks so much, just more like tips and showing you my process of like how to keep up with your Instagram, how to keep your Instagram feed cohesive, but more on just like the organization part because you guys know I'm not organized so I want to share how an unorganized person can still have a cohesive feed and not get stressed and it's all good um, I'm also going to show you just like little tips along the way with certain apps like to try and maintain the quality of the photos a lot of you do comment on my photos or DM me asking how my photos are good quality and what camera do I use? And I do use my iPhone for pretty much like 95% of my Instagram photos. I personally just think an iPhone camera has much more, like a much more realistic, real life vibe to it than a professional photo. And to be honest, even when I take pictures, like if I take pictures on my Canon, once I've uploaded it to Instagram, I feel like the quality doesn't even look that much better than the iPhone, personally. I use the iPhone X, by the way. Um, I need a new one, it's so freaking slow right now, probably doesn't help that I've got about 70,000 pictures on it. But, um, I think it's really down to the lighting. If you've got good lighting, then any camera, phone, it's going to be fine. Anyway, that's not really what we're talking about, I'm not talking about what camera I use. I'm talking about how I try and keep the quality and tips for staying up with your feed. So I'm going to start with the quality first. Kind of just to show you really just one tip on something. I'm gonna put my phone screen next to me. Let's put it here because I've got pretty stuff in the background. Not that you can see it because it's really dark. Um, let me just record my phone screen. So I just wanna show you, for example, if you use Facetune, which I know majority of people do use Facetune for one way or another, whether it's to get rid of a spot or to whiten the background or to crisp something up, anything like that, most people do use Facetune. So what you want to do is when you open your Facetune, when you open your Facetune, you want to go to this button at the top here. It will take you into more like a settings. Go to settings and you want to make sure when you go down here it says export settings, export quality. Because if you don't change this, then it automatically gives you one of the top two, which really compresses the size of your image, making it super fuzzy and super blurry and gives it just a really bad quality to it. So you want to make sure it's on this, well I use this one, normal JPEG 9.5. I haven't tried the high one to be honest, but I've just stuck with normal JPEG and that's what I use and it's fine. So make sure if you're using this, that your settings are correct. This is the same for most editing apps, like it's not just Facetune. So that's my first tip. Second tip, planning your feed. Um, I plan my feed using Unum, which I have spoken about before, is this one right here. So if I open up Unum, <laughs> I do this for both my accounts. If you don't know, I have a second account, which is more of like an inspo page. Um, which I'll probably show you on that one because otherwise you're just going to see all my sneak peek pictures that I haven't posted yet. So this is how it works. So this is my 24 Instagram page. So I am up to this one right here. So you can see it's got like that little Instagram square in the corner. So that's where I'm up to. And then this is all photos I've collected, which I like, which will fit in at some point. You can obviously move them to see what fits best next, like so. And you can also, if you wanted to, you can make this move down. So go down here and shuffle it along. So you can plan as far ahead as you want, really. Um, but I highly recommend, if you're someone who likes to have a really aesthetic feed, to use an app like this, because it's so hard to work out. Like if you open up your Instagram, and then you're like, and then you look at it and you're like, so that one will, be there and then it will be above that one so what would that look like it's quite hard 
to figure it out so i highly recommend using an app like unum there's loads that you can use there's also one called planally planally i think it's called um, I've never really, I did download that, but I've just never used it because I really like Unum, so that's the one I use. So that's the second thing. Um, I have the free version of Unum, which only gives you a certain amount of grids, so up to here. And uh, you can pay for more grids, but what I like to do, which is my next tip, is I actually have an album on my camera roll, as you can see here, um, called Bank Stock Photos, right here. And in here, I have loads of photos that I have. Some of them I need to delete, like those ones I've already posted. But in my bank stock, I basically have loads of photos that I do really like, but just didn't fit my feed at the time. Or maybe sometimes I'll have like two really good photos of an outfit, and I don't, I personally don't like to post them super close together. So I would bank stock one. So I post one, and then I'd bank stock the other one to maybe post at a later date maybe not to be honest some of these on here as you can see like this is me with blonde hair like this is super old i'm probably never going to post this now because it's really old and um, there's actually quite a few like that on here but that they're just in there because i thought maybe i might but i didn't you know and i've got some in here from the summer so i recommend that as well if you overflow on your own because you take so many photos like myself then make a folder in your camera you know, you can just make an album, you just click the cross, create a new album, call it whatever you want. I call mine bank stock photos, call it photos, insta photos, whatever you want to call it, whatever flow about. That is what I call it and I highly recommend doing that. Okay, next thing I also do, this is all in preparation to try and make me more organised when you're not, you know. So the next thing I do is captions. <laughs> So in my notes section of my folder, if I go to my notes, I have captions. So in here, I have captions. Okay, I don't sleep very well at night. And sometimes in the evening, I just come up with really good captions. So I'd write them in my notes. And then when I use them, I'll delete them sometimes. Because there's someone here that I haven't deleted. But I think that's a good idea if you think of captions. Or even if you're like a more... I prefer captions that are either funny like a little bit random or asking you guys questions about the photo stuff like that i just put them in here but if you're more of like you like deep and meaningful captions you like long captions then this is also a great place to put them because you can type them out and also on here it's quite good to lay them out like you can say you wanted it to be spaced out did i do it in here actually i think yeah this one i posted yesterday so i wanted it to say just do it but then have a space before the next sentence. So I just put a dot. Can you see? There's just like a, a dot to divide the line. So then when you post it on Instagram, you obviously do still see the dot, but it has the space, you see like this, which sometimes you just need the gap. You need the paragraph split. There's plenty of ways you can do that. You can do an underscore, you can do an up, like there's lots of ways. I just think a dot's good. Sometimes I do use this though. Instead of that dot, I use this dot because I quite like the way that looks you know but yeah whatever you want to divide your paragraph you do and um, then the other thing I always check is the size of the image so I post all of my well pretty much all of my Instagram images as full Instagram so they're full four by five is the ratio to use to get this full image as opposed to a square the reason I do this is one you get more in so you get more of your outfit in. Like imagine if this was square, it would only be to like the bottom of the shirt sleeve. Um, but also there is like a theory behind it that obviously when you look at it like this, you can see it takes up a lot of my screen space. Whereas if it was square, let me, if I just scroll down to when I used to not do this, I used to have borders. Do I even still have my borders on here? I don't even know. Um, do you know what? I don't think I do. I think I'm scrolling down to nothing right now, guys. I know I do. So when I used to have a border, like look how much smaller that space is on my screen how small it is on the screen as a whole like it's only taking up like a half half the screen if that whereas if i go to the, my recent ones where i use always full size you can see it takes up so much more space so if you imagine someone scrolling through your their news feed like their home page then they're more likely gonna like this because you'll, they're gonna see it for longer, then they're not gonna be able to go and flip past it so quickly. They're gonna be on the page for longer 
Um, so I highly recommend that. Just bear in mind, which is why another reason I suggest using Unum, that obviously it looks big like that, but when you see it in the preview, it is square. So just bear in mind that you don't want to chop off, you can chop off your head, I've done it many a times. Like this one, this one. This one's, oh no, that is actually chopped off. <laughs> like this one, for example, is chopped off, but it's fine because it still works on the page, you know? Um, sorry the light keeps changing, by the way. I'm using natural light again, so if it keeps changing, I apologize. And then when it comes down to actually posting, I will just obviously open up to put a photo in. <laughs> So obviously when you open it, it will be in square. I'm sure you all know this. If you don't want it to be square, then you just click this button and it will make it long. From here, you can then move it in if you wanted to, to make it not quite full, not quite square, which I did do actually on this picture because I thought maybe it was a little bit long. So I brought it in just a tiny bit like this, just so it was like cropped a little bit of the flooring. And then obviously I'll just go to next, next then I would copy that caption. So I'd go to this caption right here, select all copy. So this is all pre-done, usually. Sometimes I lie there for an hour trying to figure out what to freaking put as a caption and Pete gets really annoyed because I try and ask him to help me. He comes up with some crackers. Um, so then I go here and then I paste, paste it in. And then I would tag. Um, I recommend, I obviously tag what's in the image. So like my trainers, my joggers, the drink. And then I recommend trying to find pages that you think might like your image, especially if it's in an image like this, which is quite a repostable image because it's not got me in it as such. It's just my leg. That is kind of no name. It could be anyone. And try and find some pages that you might think might like it and might want to repost it. For example, you could tag me, my 24 Inspo page, because then I might repost it. Those kind of pages, like repost pages, um, you can also have a list of those if you if you want to be a bit more organized. So I would do all my tagging in there. I will try and always add a location just because I think it's more likely people are going to find your image if you add a location. It makes you guys know where I am, what I'm doing. So add location. Um, and yeah, hashtags. I'm not a huge fan. I don't use them that often as you have probably seen. Let me just get rid of this. Um, if I go back to my page, like for this one, for example, I put hashtag we got this, hashtag little things, please little minds. So you see, I'm not very um, on the ball or what's the word? I'm not very, I wouldn't say I'm the best person to recommend hashtags, to be honest, because I, I don't really have much interest in them, but you should. I've heard and seen and read a lot of things about specific hashtags and good research on hashtags can actually really help the engagement of your image. I just haven't got time for that and I just don't, I always forget. I just, it's just the one thing I always forget, but I do recommend it. There is websites you can go to where you can type in like a particular um, topic, category that your image is about. So say it's about coffee, you could put in coffee and it'll give you the most relevant hashtags and it will also tell you like how they're most rated. So for example, say on this one, so if I go to coffee goals, so you can see that there's 30,000 people have hashtagged coffee goals and then in the top, well, mine's there and the other one's there, but you want to kind of get a feel of how many likes these people in the top are getting. I think this is, I see that one got quite a bit. Um, but on the whole, not loads. So I feel like it was a good, it was a good hashtag to do because you're more likely going to get in the top hashtag, the top page of it. You really want to be in the top nine um, because there's not as many with so many likes. Whereas if I go, like Coffee is Life, it's got a million posts. So you know like that is going to be really competitive and pretty much a waste of time, to be honest. Unless you're someone who gets hundreds of thousands of likes, then it's probably, oh wow, look at that coffee. Then it's probably going to be a bit, a bit of a waste of time because you're competing with the big people, you know? Oh, that video hasn't actually got that many. 
but it's hard, hard to tell because I feel like sometimes Instagram just like pushes content for no reason to the top of the, the hashtag if it thinks it's just relevant maybe. So I feel like what I'm trying to say, oh look, there's me in the in the story. Oh, why is it not? Is that just showing that because that's my picture that I've clicked on? No. Oh no, it's that one. That's weird. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is try and use not like your bog standard like fashion blogger, beauty blogger because the chances are you're not going to make it to the top of those pages unless I said you're huge or just Instagram decides to pick your photo then try and use ones that are more really specific to your image and a little bit thinking out the box but not something that no one's going to put but as I said I'm not the best person to talk to you about hashtags because I don't do them very well <laughs> you've got tips for hashtags for me then let me know in the comments down below <laughs> And maybe you can teach me something and I'll learn and then I'll give it back to you guys. Um, but yeah, that is it. So that is like my kind of process of how I post an image and like tips and tricks along the way. Um, I haven't obviously gone into like how to plan your feed because I feel like I have done that before. If you want an updated one on how I plan my feed, then I feel like my, my camera's falling right now, like really slowly and I'm getting more and more lopsided. What's going on? <laughs> This is my situation. I'm filming on this crooked ass tripod on a box. And that is not what you think it is. That is actually a sticker on my window, which I can stick my phone to so I can take selfies. Uh, my monitor, and then we had the little bear. There is she. Flat out on the sofa next to me. Camera's falling again. It's just dying a sad death guys I think it's time to go I'm just just falling down <gasps> bye